we're just waiting for Councillor Solda, unless she's on with her. Oh, there she is. Perfect timing. Okay. Okay, six o'clock. So we will call to order our public meeting and our public hearing and start by recognizing that we are holding our meeting on the unceded territories of the Sashat and Hupachesset First Nations. Thank you. So we'll start by um, this statement to be read by the chair. So this public hearing is being convened in order to consider the following proposed bylaws. We have two applications today. The first one, application number one, is for 4279 Raven Hill Avenue, and it is number one, official community plan amendment number 33 for 4279 Raven, Raven Hill Ave, and uh, by, bylaw number 5018, and number two, zoning bylaw amendment number 43, 4279 Raven Hill, bylaw number 5019. The second application, number two, is for 2943 10th Avenue, Quality Foods, Zoning bylaw text amendment number T27, site specific use, C2, commercial bylaw number 5022. At this public hearing, any person who believes their interest in property is affected by the proposed bylaws will be given an opportunity to be heard on the matters contained in the proposed bylaws. However, it is important that all who speak at this meeting restrict their remarks to matters contained in the proposed bylaws and it is my responsibility as chair of this meeting to make sure this happens. Those of you who wish to speak concerning the proposed bylaws are asked that you begin your comments to council by clearly stating your name and address. Then you may give us the benefit of your views concerning the proposed bylaws. Members of council may ask questions of you following your comments. However, the main function of council members this evening is to listen to the views of the public. It is not the function of council at this public hearing to debate the merits of the proposed bylaws with individual citizens. Everyone who deems their interest in property to be affected shall be given an opportunity to be heard at this meeting. No one will be or should feel discouraged or prevented from making their views known. Regardless of whether you favor or oppose any particular application or argument, please refrain from applause or other expressions of emotion. Unfortunately, we can't even we can't even applaud each other now um, over Zoom. These are, of course, from when we were holding meetings in person. Restraint enables others whose views may or may not coincide with your own to exercise their right to express their views and enable all views expressed to be heard as in an Im impartial a forum as possible. After this public hearing has concluded, the council may, without further notice, give whatever effect council believes proper to the representations made at this hearing. So we will now start with a description of the application um, to be read by the corporate officer. Thank you, Chair Minions. So this public hearing, uh, sorry, the public hearing will proceed in two parts, as you noted in the statement, part A being the applicant uh, for 4279 Raven Hill Avenue, and the second being with regards to 2943 10th Avenue, uh, Quality Foods Grocery Store. So for the first part of this public hearing, uh, Janeki, the last name, the applicant is applying to amend the official community plan bylaw and the zoning bylaw to facilitate a subdivision of the property to create one additional single family residential parcel. The proposed bylaws are official community plan amendment number 33, 4279 Raven Hill Avenue, bylaw number 5018. The bylaw, if amended, will change the designation of the subject property from a mix of park and open space and future residential to a mix of park and open space and residential. The second bylaw that would be amended would be the zoning bylaw, amendment number 43, again for 4279 Raven Hill Avenue, bylaw number 5019. This bylaw, if amended, will change from future development to a mix of P2 parks and recreation and R1 single family residential. Thank you. And we'll now go to background information. Uh, we have a report dated March 1st, 2021 from the development planner, which will be summarized by the manager of planning. Thank you. 
Madam Mayor and Council, let me just see if I can quickly share my screen here. Um, we'll just go from the beginning. All right, can you see that okay? Perfect. Okay, thank you, Madam Mayor and Council. So the city has received a development application to make amendments to the official community plan and zoning bylaw for the property located at 4279 Raven Hill Avenue. Uh, the purpose of the development application uh, is to enable subdivision that would result in the creation of one additional single family residential lot. In addition to that, the purpose of the split zone is to protect and preserve the natural riparian area at the western edge of the parcel that, uh, in, that involves Ship Creek. So the subject property is located at the south end of the city. Uh, in an area that is primarily single family residential. A large part of the surrounding area is mostly undeveloped forested areas, some of which contain water courses. The applicant uh, has requested to amend the official community plan to change the designation of a portion of the property from future residential to residential and a portion of the parcel will remain designated as parks and open space, <coughs> sorry, as per the OCP. Uh, here you can see that on the map there, the, the current uh, OCP designation, the gray being uh, the future uh, residential area and the green being the parks and open space area. The subject property is currently zoned FD, future development entirely, and the applicant is proposing to rezone a portion of the property to R1 single family residential to allow for the future uh, subdivision of the property. Uh, again, the remainder of the parcel would be rezoned P2, parks and recreation, uh, in order to be consistent with the official community plan land use designation. And this map just shows the, the current parcel being uh, all zoned future development. So the parcel will be split zoned if the application is successful. Um, and the purpose of that split zoning is to uh, is to really uh, split the OCP uh, designation and the zoning designation to ensure that there is a, um, some protection and preservation of the natural riparian area that contains Ship Creek. And here you can just see on the map um, the portion uh, that of the subject property that will remain designated parks and open space, and then would be rezoned to park uh, P2 park and recreation. And the remainder of the parcel would be rezoned to R1 single family residential. And again, this um, outlined in red here is just the area that will be protected as parks and open space. Uh, this map also shows some of the adjacent land uses, uh, which are primarily future development and R1 single family residential there. Um, overall, the proposed development and bylaw amendments are consistent with the policy requirements set out in the city's official community plan. However, it is worth noting that the OCP requires land designated as future residential to be rezoned um, subsequent to in-depth community consultation and neighborhood planning. Now, in this instance, a neighborhood plan for the surrounding area does not exist. But for this application, the need for a neighborhood plan is somewhat reduced, um, primarily because the proposed development is consistent with the residential neighborhood and will only result in the creation of one additional lot. So um, not a, a major change to the overall neighborhood and not necessarily anticipated to be a, a large impact on the adjacent parcels if this lot is to be developed with an additional residential lot. With regards to the zoning bylaw, the proposed subdivision will meet the site development regulations, and the majority of the site development regulations are essentially consistent between FD and R1 zones, including the minimum setbacks, uh, maximum height, and maximum number of stories. All of those things are consistent between those two zones. The biggest difference um, between the FD and R1 zones uh, with regards to site development regulations is the uh, max lot coverage, which gets increased with the R1 zone. And then rezoning from FD to R R1 doesn't help ensure that the lot will be used for single family development, uh, permitting a form and character that is consistent with the surrounding neighborhood there, specifically along uh, 11th Avenue and, and Raven Hill. So lands within Port Alberni are not subject to the provincial riparian areas protection regulation. Um, 
However, the policy direction of the of the official community plan does require um, for environmental reports to be submitted prior to development near water courses. So the applicants have worked um, collaboratively with the city to ensure that this policy objective is is considered and addressed. Um, specifically with regards to protecting that riparian area and preserving the existing trails. Let's go back here, actually. The applicants um, have engaged a qualified environmental professional, which has recommended, uh, provided some recommendations for this site, including uh, establishing a 30 meter setback from the top of Ravine Bank, maintaining existing forest cover uh, to at least 30 meters from the top of bank, um, to ensure that the existing trail at the top of the ravine should remain in its current location as it's not negatively impacting the riparian area in any significant way. Um, though there were also recommendations about a pedestrian bridge uh, could also be installed where the trail crosses the stream to mitigate further impacts. So those are all in involved and um, provided by the qualified environmental professional when assessing that area. The map here shows the designated riparian area with that 30 meter setback, as well as the trails that go through the subject property near the creek. And the red dotted line here indicates the area that will be protected as parks and open space um, and P2 parks and recreation as a condition of rezoning. Also, as a condition of rezoning, the applicants have agreed to register a restrictive covenant to further protect their riparian area from vegetation and tree removal. Um, this covenant would also protect the existing trail as it is located and provide specific guidelines for new trail development if that were to ever occur in the future. So therefore the trails and the riparian area will be protected by the covenant, but also um, will be included within the portion of the property designated as parks and open space. So to some degree, uh, a, double, a double layer of protection potentially, you could consider it that way. So here we have a general concept of the site layout uh, of the additional lot that is being proposed by the applicant. Um, the applicants have indicated that the new parcel will have a panhandle layout to allow access to the site from the somewhat uh, semi-constructed portion of Rafen Hill Avenue. Now, while a long panhandle layout is, is not ideal and not typically something the city would, would usually encourage, in this instance, it helps preserve that unconstructed portion of Ravenhill Avenue, which is currently used as a green space and includes some trails um, and access to Ship Creek. Now, if there were to be further subdivision or further development of adjacent parcels, the city um, may want to explore constructing that, that, uh, that portion of uh, Rafen Hill Avenue, but at this point for one additional lot, um, we, we consider it um, all right to proceed with kind of a panhandle um, layout. And this map just kind of shows how far west where that extension of Raven, Raven Hill Avenue currently goes. Um, and again, kind of just any future development might require some of the um, some of that road construction to be extended if the development demands for for access. So the development application for 4279 Ravenhill Ave was uh, circulated to relevant agencies for comment and there were no major issues with the proposed change in land use. Um, however, there are some engineering and site servicing details that will need to be confirmed um, and agreed to prior to subdivision review and approval. The Advisory Planning Commission uh, reviewed the development application and recommended that City Council proceed with the OCP and zoning bylaw amendments um, as they were supportive of, of the proposed development of the site. <laughs> Sorry. And City Council has, has now given first and second reading of the proposed bylaws and further consideration of the proposed bylaws will be uh, given subsequent to hearing from the public tonight at, uh, at the hearing. And that concludes my presentation. Okay, thank you very much, Caitlin. Um, so we have the information from the planner. Um, is there any, co no correspondence received? Has there been any late correspondence received on this matter? Uh, yes, Madam Mayor, we have two written submissions. 
Uh, one being from uh, Brent Masso, who's also a participant uh, attendee at this webinar. So he may choose to take advantage of speaking directly to council. In the meantime, I will read his letter to council. Essentially, he's in opposition to the amendment and he states he is the owner of property located at 2184 11th Avenue. He has owned that property for over 15 years and his lot is adjacent to the whole north side of the lot located at 4279 Raven Hill Avenue. In the past, he has not had any drainage problems. However, after the lot at 4279 Raven Hill was raised by over one meter with landfill, he began to experience drainage issues on his lot. In the last few months, two trees were blown down due to ground saturation caused by the modified drainage. He has attached a short phone video of the northeast corner of the property, the subject property, which was shared with council. You can see that a steady flow of water is being formed on his property. This is directly due to the poor storm drainage from the, his neighbor at 4279 Raven Hill. He is opposed to the proposed amendments to the official community plan. He does not believe that the City of Port Alberni Engineering Department has properly reviewed the impact that the water runoff that a residential property at 4279 Raven Hill will have on his property. The constructing of a residence at 4279 Raven Hill will cause a significant increase in storm drainage and water runoff. If the property designation is changed from park and open space, to a residential designation, it will significantly depreciate the value of his property. He would like an opportunity to address council. And as I say, he is showing as an attendee. And he would also like to inform council that he may seek legal uh, advice from a real estate appraisal firm and legal counsel. The second uh, letter is quite a lengthy one and it's submitted from Gerald Gertken. And he essentially is opposing the application as well. The purpose of the subject property to facilitate a subdivision off the property to create one additional single family residential parcel. This additional lot in front of the subject residence and then a P2 park in front of the fu future said and I can't read that word, will impede roads to exit from any future developments north of the subject properties. 9th and 10th Avenue would not be able to exist southbound onto Raven Hill, and there is no obvious place to exit onto 11th Avenue. As there is two private properties the same width as the subject property, side by side, north and next to the subject property, a loop such as 10th Avenue, jamming into a further north 9th Avenue or a cul-de-sac on the end of a joint avenue or some other arrangement um, of the subject northern property line would disproportionately affect one private property owner. A better advantage over the other concerns roads or easements and resulting lots. A road going into the 2300 block of 8th Avenue would be costly as no lots would come from that extension. The 2300 block of 8th Avenue is too narrow. With 14 feet and 3 and 1 8 inches of road width and a ridiculous 15 feet 9 and a half inches of boulevard width on the east side of the right of way. The boulevard portion is more than a foot and a half wider than the road portion of the right of way. This road has been like this for more than 25 years and will likely remain that way. The residents on that narrow road don't want to pay for a wider road. Our concern being from the letter writer, uh, lot nine, which is the private property to the other side of the 2300 block of 8th Avenue. We don't want any road or easements on our property. We have not, a uh, I can't make out that word. We intend to make a, arrangements with anyone to that effect, especially any area diagonally across the back of our property. The lane of the 2400 block of 8th and 9th avenues will not be extended onto our property and will not benefit the neighbor to the west of us in any way. 
Uh, we found a letter to City Council May 2017 stating the above information about our property. We and our beneficiaries of our property will not be part of any development now or in the future. Council was provided a copy of this letter, so hopefully he'll be able to, it was a little challenging to read, so my apologies for that. Thank you very much. And we will now go to input from the public. So any members of the public wishing to speak to the first application on Raven Hill, um, now is the opportunity. Um, and uh, Twyla, I don't know if you wanna comment at all on the process or if everyone, I'm assuming everyone is aware. Absolutely, uh, cer certainly we can comment on the process. Anybody wishing to speak to this application, as uh, Mayor Minions has just expressed, she will invite you to do so. So we have just done, that now. So please raise your hand and we will um, allow you to present your comments to council. And we have Brent Masso who will address council. Mr. Masso, go ahead. You're muted right now, Mr. Masso. In one on mute. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Thank you. Oh, and if you want to just start by stating, we know your name, but if you could just state your address for the record as well, that would Hello, be Hello, my name is uh, Brent Masso. I live at 2184 11th Avenue. I've lived there for over the past 15 years. Over the past uh, 15 years, I've lived at the property at uh, 11th Avenue there, but uh, um, So, Mr. Massimo, there you go. You had muted. It keeps coming on to mute there. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> we can hear you again now. Hey. Yeah. Anyways, I was saying um, water naturally drained towards uh, Ship Creek before the, that property was raised with uh, all the fill that was brought in for that previous uh, property at 427. Um, I'm not sure the address there but it was raised quite a bit there. And, and ever since then, the water drains down my property running parallel to the to my property now. So it's starting to erode it and get saturated with groundwater, right? I'm sort of opposed to it, even with the, when they start the, even with the, like also the panhandle there, right? The lot that was, uh, it's gonna be planned there. The development, it's, it, it's anticipated that it's gonna raise the property even more with a panhandle uh, access there. So to get the neg negative grade to the flow, to the storm drain, I think it, it's gonna affect it, my property even more, it'll raise it up even more with the fill that's being brought in. Council should not approve the, to the bylaw um, that's recommended or that you guys are going to go and go and do here now. So I don't know what else to say about it here. I'm just sort of, uh, I, I talked to, uh, um, city engineers before when the property was being developed and it sort of, they didn't answer me or talk to me. I talked to counts, uh, um, a guy named Wilf in there and a couple other people about the runoff already and nothing came of it. Just some negativity and uh, part on the phone call there. It got me upset and I didn't, I said some negative things too, but uh, what uh, came of it, he was saying the sky is green, the grass is green. And I, and I sort of swore afterwards too, right? I said, what, what does that have to do with the runoff on my property? That has nothing to do with what you're saying there. Um, so anyways, uh, I'm opposed to what's going to be going on with the property and hopefully it doesn't go forward. It's going to really affect the value of my property and especially if it's raised quite a bit more. It, the, that property is raised so much, it, it's crazy how much fill was brought in. I, I, th I thought they weren't going to put so much fill in there. Um, that's all I have to say right now, I guess, uh, 
um, I have nothing else to say, so. Okay, thank you very much for speaking today, Mr. Masso. Um, Twyla, are there any other, is there any other public input? There is nobody else that has raised their hands to speak to this application. Oh, I just had the uh, applicant raise his hand. So we have the property owner and I will allow him to address council. Go ahead. Go ahead, Robert. You're, right. you're muted. Yeah, there you go. Okay, am I unmuted now? Yeah, yes. we can hear you now. All right, so I'm not sure what's appropriate in these meetings. If I was supposed to raise my hand right now and address uh, uh, Brent's concerns, or you are absolutely welcome to. Um, and then following that, the next um, part of the meeting will be council questions. So um, okay. yeah, it's great to provide information now, and we can always ask further questions if we have them. So okay. go ahead. Are you ready? As far as Brent's concern about raising, uh, putting more fill down, and, and raising the 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 level of the property, the lower property up more, that's not gonna happen. We, we, we've completed that. And it was done for a reason. Um, and it was done for a reason. I did get a permit for that. And, I, and, I, and I, I told the city engineering what I was doing before I did it. Um, and the, 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 the way that the property slopes, the, prop, the, the drainage has always gone off in that direction toward his property. And we tried to address that uh, before we did anything, even on the upper lot where we built our own home. And we had uh, Barman come in and do a, 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 gosh, I can't remember what it's called, but a grading plan, sorry, a grading plan. And um, so what we did was the, the water always ran over toward his property. What we did was we, at, at quite an expense to ourselves, raise that side of the property up a little bit higher to direct the water back toward our property and away from Brent's property. I understand there's two trees down on his property. One of them I think has been down for a long time. One of them has gone down in the last year or so. Uh, but, but like I said, the, the, the water is always drained off in that direction. And we had the city engineers come down and look at it and they agreed as well. And we did as much as we could to mitigate that and, and raise the, the uh, northern edge of the property up so, so it would come back onto our property and then direct it down into Ship Creek with, with drainage. Large drainage in front too. Yeah, also I, I would just like to mention, sorry, this is Louise Ranger, also an owner. Um, and uh, I just, um, the trees, I understand the, the trees next door have always been a concern to us on, on Brent's property as well, because our property before we purchased it was completely logged. So when the wind comes up, it, it, it has made his trees very vulnerable for sure, um, because they're very tall, very big, and also have effectively sails on them with their leaves. So they, they are definitely getting a lot of wind because it was pre-logged before we bought the property. That's our opinion. But we did have the engineers come by because we were concerned that um, our neighbor was concerned about the property. So we had them come by and double check that everything we did was in fact correct. And they agreed that what we did in fact redirected water away from his property. So I hope that that helps. Thank you for that. Um, Okay, um, Twyla, is there any further public input at this point? Mr. Massa would like to speak again. Okay, okay, Mr. Massa, whenever you're ready. Yes, can you hear me? We can, yes. Yes, I disagree with what he's saying. The property never did, uh, it actually sloped the other way towards uh, Raven Hill. The water always naturally went the other direction. When they, when, like I said, when they had done that property, they put so much fill in there, Ship Creek was getting all the silt coming in from that property, running down towards Ship Creek. I actually have videos of the silt in the Ship Creek coming from this property. The owner of this property also, he was out there with a shovel trying to direct the silt coming down from his property with a shovel. So I don't get it. It's, uh, I, um, the report on the 
uh, does not address the following hazards, flood groundwater flows, mud flows, erosion, drainage. Um, I recommend the city council get a full geotechnical covenant on this property. Thank you, Mr. Massa. Um, by life, there's no further input from members of the public at this point. We will move to questions from council. Yes, no hands are raised. Thank you. So this is an opportunity for members of council to ask questions um, through the chair of the manager of planning, the applicant, or members of the public who have spoken. I see Councillor Solda with her hand up, so she can go first, and then Councillor Corbeil. Thank you, Madam Mayor. A couple of questions, um, and I don't know who's going to answer that, if it's the city manager can direct. Um, regarding drainage ditches, it wins when there's so much water, like I, I looked at the video again as the, everybody was speaking, and does drainage ditch, ditches need to be built for something like that with all the runoff? Is it our responsibility? Whose responsibility is it? And I'll just carry on with the questions and then it can be funneled wherever. City engineer report. Do we have a city, a city engineer report on, um, taking a look at the property and looking at the runoffs and how the drainage is and how long ago was that report done if there was one and um, I'm just kind of curious to know about drainage ditches I mean is it the property owner's responsibility whose is it Thank you. So I think the question there, um, probably to the director of development services, if, if available, or the manager of planning, is um, about responsibilities and um, and really what the city's role, I think, is in ensuring that these things are done correctly. Super. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. Whenever you're ready. Thank you, Madam Mayor, uh, to Councillor Solda. So um, drainage ditches on, on public road right of ways would be the city's to to maintain. But during a subdivision process, if this rezoning was successful, the next step would be uh, a formal application for subdivision. And those are, are where we would ensure that all city infrastructure, sanitary sewer drainage is considered and, and looked at. So uh, I, I'm hearing what Mr. Masso has to say and the applicant has to say, that would be something that would be resolved or, or looked at and examined and sure it's, it's done properly during the subdivision process. And we would involve the city engineer in that uh, examination and that work. And if it was to do with the subdivision, it would be the subdivision, the applicant's responsibility to ensure that was done as per the city's direction. Thank you, that's very helpful. Thank you. Great, and Councillor Corbeil and then Councillor Poon. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Well, sort of along the same lines uh, as uh, Councillor Solda's question, I'm wondering uh, if the engineer's report was done prior to any uh, landfill being put in and if there's been a, uh, a subsequent uh, report after the landfill or if there hasn't been, uh, could there be? And I guess that question's to the manager of planning. Thank you, Scott, if you're able to answer that. Uh, well, I can, I'm not sure if there has been an engineering report uh, done by the city. It sounds like uh, some previous city staff from the engineering department has been, been out there to take a look at it. Um, whether a formal report was done, I, I'm, not, I'm not aware. Uh, it doesn't seem that it was part of this uh, rezoning application. So I suspect there wasn't a formal report. This was referred to engineering department to take a look at. But as I, as I indicated before, if this proceeds during the subdivision process, we would engage with our engineering department and potentially ask the applicant to engage an engineer to take to, to consider how this needs to be uh, to looked at, looked at for this subdivision and what's currently there. Thank you. I, I think it's important that if, uh, if there was even notes in a notebook prior to the development, uh, we should know what uh, what happened there. What, what did they record? I think that, um, and if I can just somewhat summarize here, um, 
I, I understand the concerns um, around the engineering. I think that the um, information that we're getting is that that is a, a part of the subdivision process. Um, the function of a public hearing is to determine if this is a suitable use of land, um, not to work out the specific details of the application and approvals that it needs to go through. So I think what I'm hearing is that this is somewhat outside the scope of the public hearing. Um, although is, you know, certainly of concern and importance to um, neighbors, there is a recognition that it will be looked at, it just um, is not done as a part of the public hearing function. So it's not included in our package for that reason. Councillor Poon. Uh, thank you. My question relates to when it is rezoned, um, is there, I mean, is there a minimum lot size? Is there any controls in place for when there is a subdivision um, as to how big those lots are and or how small they can be? Thank you, Scott. Yeah, there in all our zones, there's minimum lot sizes uh, required and uh, this is the R1 zone that they're proposing uh, to, to go to. So I think that, I, I believe that was part of the, the staff report. It should have had that in there, but I can quickly check what the minimum lot size is. So the minimum lot size in the R1 zone is 600 square meters or 6,458 square feet. That's the minimum. It's not necessarily what the applicant might propose to, to do. They can go a larger lot size. And I believe what is currently looked at is, is larger than that. But that is the minimum lot size of the zone that council is being asked to consider. Okay, so that's the, so the proposed one is probably exceeding that, but it is possible for them to go smaller if they want to during the subdivision process. Potentially, but as right. the manager of planning said, if you look to try and go smaller, other implications come into play, potentially such as road construction, uh, extension of services. You know, when you try and more dense, you know, other uh, factors come into play. So what the applicant is indicating is they'd like to do one panhandle lot given uh, some of the infrastructure that's out there. Now, now would this during subdivision process normally come to council? No, the subdivision does not come to council. Um, it, it, it is usually a condition of final adoption that the applicant be required to apply for a preliminary layout review so that uh, that work is done, but it would be reported to council that a preliminary layout review has been completed. Uh, if council, council would need to consider after this public hearing whether it supports uh, this potential rezoning application. And then if you do by way of granting third reading, then this formal subdivision uh, application process would start. Okay, thanks very much. Thank you. Are there other questions from council? Oh, Councillor Solda, you had put your hand up again. Question answered, okay. Any other questions of council? Okay, seeing none. Once this portion of the public hearing has closed, members of council may not as a group or as individuals receive any further oral or written presentations on this matter, including what might be perceived, of, perceived as informal discussions immediately after the termination of this meeting. I ask that all parties comply with this. I'm going to now call three times for any further speakers on any of the matters contained in the proposed bylaw as it pertains to 4279 Raven Hill Avenue. For the first time, is there anyone who wishes to make any further representations? I'm not seeing any hands raised. Thank you. Yeah. For the second time, is there anyone who wishes to make any further representations? And again, no hands have been raised. Okay, and for the third and final time, is there anyone who wishes to make any further representations? And again, no hands have been raised. Thank you. There being no further speakers, I declare this portion part A for 4279 Raven Hill Avenue of the public hearing to be closed. We will now move on to 
part B of 2943 10th Avenue Quality Foods. And we'll start with the description of the application, which will be read aloud by the corporate officer. Thank you, Mayor Minions. So the applicant is applying to amend the zoning bylaw to facilitate the development of a liquor and wine and beer store at 2943 10th Avenue, and it's the Quality Foods Grocery Store. The proposed bylaw is zoning bylaw text amendment number T27, site specific use, C2 general commercial, bylaw number 5022. The bylaw, if amended, will add text to sections 5.19.4 C2 general commercial site specific uses table as reflected in the bylaw. Thank you. And we'll move on to background information. We have a report dated March 1st, 2021 from the development planner, which will be summarized by the manager of planning, it says, but I do see the development planner <laughs> popping up. So Brian, <laughs> if this is you, you're welcome to go ahead. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm just going to share my screen. Okay, so the city has received an application to rezone 2943 10th Avenue in order to add a liquor, wine, and beer store as a permitted use property. The applicant intends to operate a liquor store inside of a 2400 square foot addition to the existing quality foods building. And the property is currently zoned uh, C2, general commercial, but in order to permit a new liquor store, a text amendment is required uh, to the zoning bylaw, and this would be for a site-specific use. And to clarify, the text amendment would permit a liquor, wine, and beer store only at this property and not any other property uh, within the C2 zone. It wouldn't be like a blanket amendment. Uh, an amendment to the zoning bylaw is currently the way the city permits new liquor stores in Port Alberni. And the application has been in process for a few months now. And in December, the Planning Advisory Commission reviewed the application and recommended that City Council proceed with these, this amendment. And the only condition of approval that they recommended uh, is that the applicant be required to submit a security for offsite works and services before final approval or final adoption. On February 8th, council gave first and second readings to the draft bylaw and directed staff to schedule a public hearing this evening. The property being discussed is located at the corner of 10th Avenue and China Creek Road. And this is designated general commercial in the official community plan. Uh, the property is part of a distinct commercial node within a single family residential neighborhood, though the area do does also include some small scale neighborhood commercial and small residential uh, multifamily properties. The site is also directly across from the playing fields that are part of the 8th Avenue Learning Center. And you can see on the map of your screen, this is a clip from the OCP land use map. You have the commercial properties in red, the institutional in blue. You can, see, you can see the surrounding yellow, which is the single family land use designation. In terms of the city's policy goals and regulations, the proposal aligns with the city's policy for commercial development in the official community plan, including the concentration of commercial development into those established nodes and access to bicycle routes, siting, and form and character. And allowing a liquor, wine, and beer store in this location also aligns with the intent of the C2 general commercial zone. <clears throat> as part of the rezoning process, uh, the city sent referrals to other agencies and department for comment. This is part of our standard process. Uh, Island Health stated that they had no regulatory objection to the liquor store, but they did note that the uh, proximity to the school could be a concern as some communities establish minimum distance requirements. Uh, though Port Alberni has no policy that puts conditions on the distance between liquor stores and other uses. And this is the case in many of uh, our neighboring communities as well. However, staff did reach out to the school board. Um, they confirmed with their board that they had no uh, issues with the application and then sent us their comment. Uh, and just for reference, this liquor store would be approximately 1.35 kilometers away from the nearest liquor store. With regards to parking, uh, there will be a small reduction in the number of spaces on site and the applicant would need to apply for a variance at the development permit stage. On your screen, you can see uh, a site plan that they've submitted with their application, their layout of the parking lot, and you can see where the new addition will be placed onto the building, and it is within the existing parking lot. <clears throat> They're proposing to provide 82 stalls instead of the required 85. And this does mean that the parking lot will be smaller, but they're also proposing to improve the parking lot to make it safer for pedestrians. And you can see on the map where they've added 
sidewalks and pedestrian pathways. Uh, to summarize, oh, also, sorry, commercial vehicles will also not be permitted uh, to park on 10th Avenue for loading and deliveries. This will be confined to the parking lot. Uh, that's something that they've confirmed with us, and it will be a fairly small truck. The store has a smaller capacity. It'll fit in the parking lot for those deliveries. Uh, so to summarize, the city has no policy that puts conditions on the location of liquor stores in Port Alberni. Uh, instead, it's managed through the rezoning process on a case-by-case -case basis. Amending the zoning bylaw to, amount, to allow a liquor, wine, and beer store at 2943 10th Avenue is supported by policies and objectives in the official community plan, and it's compatible with the existing grocery store use. Uh, the proposal also meets the requirements of the C2 site development regulations. However, adding more commercial space at this property will likely result in more traffic to the site, and there would be some reduction of the on-site parking. And you can see a, con a concept that their architect put together on your screen. The store will fit into that parking lot next to the store. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brian. We'll move on to B3, which is correspondence. And I'll just acknowledge that we have received an email dated March 1st, 2021 from Rebecca Tarapaki commenting that the community doesn't need another beer and wine store and a second email dated February 19th, 2021 from Andy and Robin of Dog Mountain Brewing expressing support for the project. City Clerk, has there been any late correspondence? Yes, we have a few submissions. Uh, first being from Jennifer and David Neuron, and they're opposing the application. They indicate they own property on 11th Avenue and are located directly behind the quality food store. Thus, they feel their property will be negatively affected by the proposed changes. They understand the motivation to improve the walking score of the neighborhood and promote non-vehicle shopping trips. However, with the BC Liquor Store roughly 15 minutes walking distance down the road, they feel this addition is uh, unnecessary and unwanted. Uh, another submission from uh, Karam Sandhu, and they express opposition. Um, Port Alberni does need more development. However, a new liquor store is not the type of development that they feel is necessary in Port Alberni. Port Alberni has the distinction of having one of the highest number of liquor stores per capita with eight. The community is already well served. By allowing another store in Port Alberni, it will require retailers to respond by decreasing already low prices to maintain market share. This could have a ne negative impact on the community by making liquor even more accessible than it already is. Uh, there is also a safety issue with this application. As the manager of planning stated at the February 8th council meeting, the loading base for delivering product cannot be shared with quality foods. As a 53 foot trailer would not be able to navigate the already congested parking lot, either during off hours or while the store is open. The only other way to get around, get product into the store would be from 10th Avenue. Having trucks parked on the road and then loaded from the 53 Three foot trailers will only create hazards for drivers, cyclists, and pedestrians. They are asking that council deny this proposal um, for the reasons that they outlined in their letter. We also have another submission from Colbert Rana, and again, expressing opposition to the application, commenting that at the regular meeting of council on February 22nd, a motion was brought forth to submit a resolution to ABICC to petition the province to improve access to and reduce wait times for individuals seeking treatment for their addictions. Um, with the public hearing being held today for a new liquor store, uh, potentially adding to the eight that we already have, the letter writer hopes that council does not want to first increase the problem by allowing more liquor stores in the town. And then lastly, we have uh, what basically was a uh, statement prepared by Quality Foods that was requesting people support. They had boxes on the, uh, the uh, petition that said to support the rezoning, neutral or that they are against. And 12 submissions were received from various individuals expressing support. Thank you very much. We will now move to input from the public regarding the bylaw. So any members of the public wishing to speak 
to this application, now is the time to use the raise hand function and the Director of Corporate Services will put you in the queue to speak. Twyla, whenever you're ready. And I'm not seeing any hands being raised. Okay. Oh, one has, one has been raised, Jamie Laporte. So we will invite Jamie and go ahead, Jamie. You're muted. Thank you. Hello. <clears throat> Hello. Hi, Jamie, we can hear you. If you wanna just start by stating your name and address, that would be great. Uh, my name is Jamie Laporte. My address is 2881 8th Avenue. Okay, I, uh, I don't support this uh, change in bylaw. I think that uh, a new liquor store in the area would, uh, would not serve the Port Alberni very well. I think we have enough liquor stores. Um, I live right across the road from 8th Avenue School. And even though the school board has not raised any objections at this time, I also have children that attend the 8th Avenue School as, as part of the Choices Program. And I don't think a liquor store across the road from the school that they attend would be beneficial to any of the children that are attending that school at this time. Um, VAST is also part of that school, which is all for, which is for uh, children that have problems with all the regular school and um, attend this school as an alternative school. And uh, these are all uh, sensitive children that wouldn't need to have their, uh, their education or to have uh, the access to a liquor store right across the road from a school um, at this time. Uh, also, in regards to the parking, I believe the parking lot is already congested enough, and uh, it doesn't really suit the building or the land use for that area. Uh, I would also agree with the people on 11th Avenue that it would decrease my property values to have a liquor store that close, as there's enough transient, uh, transient uh, traffic coming up and down through this area as it is already. Um, so for these reasons, I don't support the bylaw change or the zoning change to allow for a liquor store to be built at Quality Foods. I sent an email to Quality Foods directly outlining how I felt about it as well. And um, I, yeah, I just don't think it's a great idea at this time. Um, the school board at this point as, uh, cannot say in the future whether or not that school will be opened up and created into a public school again. Um, but if Portal Bernie continues to grow as the council and mayor hope it to grow as, and continue to um, um, bring in more and more families, then uh, we are going to need to reopen some of these schools in the future. And that should be also taken into consideration at this time. So thank you. Okay, thanks very much, Jamie, for speaking today. Twyla, do we have any other members of the public ready to speak? Yes, we have uh, on behalf of the applicant, Darus. And go ahead. You're muted, Mr. Darus, or Peruzuli, sorry. I was muted. There you go. Uh, my name is Darus Peruzuli, architect. Uh, uh, on the project, I just wanted to be here. If there is any question, I can uh, answer the question. Thank you for that. And do you have any um, any other input to add, or just available for questions? Uh, the only thing uh, regarding the, um, the delivery, as uh, Brian already mentioned, uh, this was discussed with the the. Um, the operator and they are proposing to bring the small truck of the hours through the parking lot for for delivery and not using the uh, bigger trucks uh, uh. okay thank you very much for that and um, we will keep in mind that you're on if council has any questions when we get to council input twyla has there been any other public input i'm not seeing any hands at this moment Oh, we have Keith Barbin. Okay. And Mr. Barbin, if you just unmute yourself and go ahead. Hi there, can you hear me now? We can, yes, thanks. Oh. Whenever you're ready, just state oh. your name and address for the record, thanks. Sure, my name's Keith Barbone. I'm uh, speaking on behalf of the, uh, the operator, uh, Cascadia Liquor. We're part of the Truffles Group of Companies. 
uh, based out of Victoria, but we operate stores all over the island. Um, understand some of the concerns of the neighbors and uh, we, we've dealt with these things and we're sensitive to them um, with respect to you know, the impact on the neighborhood and the way we run the store. Uh, what I can assure the public and council and the mayor is that uh, we have operated stores in neighborhoods and, and actually um, replaced you know, locations where former <clears throat> BC government stores were, which had problems and we've implemented uh, good neighbor policies with the local schools and the local neighborhood associations. And we, we run those meetings still today just to make sure that we're always on top of any concerns or issues that come for the public. Um, we don't want to represent our brand negatively. So uh, we're going to be very concerned about obviously miners around the property and obviously miners are not allowed into our store uh, to purchase alcohol. So um, while I understand the concerns of the public, uh, I want to assure uh, the council and the mayor and, and people that are present on this call that uh, we have a reputation of whole. We run a nice liquor store, um, carry lots of local products, um, lots of specialty items. Um, and, uh, and I think we're going to uh, do the neighborhood crowd and show them that uh, we can come in as a good community partner and do a really great job. Thank you very much. Thanks very much for that. Okay, Twyla, assuming no other members of the public at this point wishing to provide input. We act, sorry to interject, we actually do. I've got a couple of individuals lined up. First okay, to speak wonderful. would be Peter Muggleston. And go ahead, Peter. Good evening, Mayor Minions and Council. Peter Muggleston, I'm the owner of the Best Western Plus Barclay Hotel what operates a licensee retail store, address 4277 Stamp Avenue in Port Alberni. Let's not confuse why we're opposing this application. We are not anti-business or fear competition. We are entrepreneurs and fully understand and assume the significant accountability for the inherent risks and the outcome of our ventures. We are firm believers in the free enterprise system. However, this application does not fall into this category. The liquor industry is highly regulated. We are told where we can locate our business, when we can open and close, what products we can carry, and how we purchase them. This is not a case where the applicant is going to sell a better product or bring something new to Port Alberni. <clears throat> Although this application is brought forward by Quality Food, who in my view is a good corporate citizen, the issue before us is a bylaw to allow proper zoning for another licensee retail store, also known as an LRS in Port Alberni. The relocation of an LRS from another community, which I understand this is, is not something that Port Alberni needs. The city of Port Alberni already has seven operating LRS operations and one government liquor store. The market has spoken as at one time there were nine. What kind of story does this begin to tell? The question of the day is what number is enough? Port Alberni is already a city that has a top percentile of more LRSs per capita compared to other cities in this province. Is the success or lack thereof of this area to be solved by moving to another area that is closer to already overabundance of LRS in a five minute drive? In my opinion, all five will be weaker. How many operators will see a vision or be able to reinvest in their business? And in fact, Port Alberni when this happens. The city planners and managers and considering what is best for the community might want to ask themselves, is there an actual need for another licensee retail store? Council, I hope you take this matter seriously and I thank the ramifications of your decision. And I do want to make a, a, a comment on one of the comments by, and I didn't catch his name, but it's, I believe he's manager of planning. What uh, the comment was, um, the stock, the, the operator has spoken with the, the delivery system, which is VanCam and in in what comes to our stores. And they said they could uh, 
bring smaller trucks. And we don't dictate what size of trucks comes in, into our properties and, and how they're delivered. It's, it's not, a, it's not a, a, a way of business. Um, and I also remember uh, one of the licensee retail stores on Argyle, which is the Port Pub, which is no longer there. Um, they had their 50, 53 foot trailers uh, parked on Argyle and unloading all their product there. So that's a fact. Um, I don't think he can dictate of how they're gonna you receive your product in, the, in their trucks. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Peter. And Twyla, go ahead with whoever the next person is. And Charlene Patterson. And go ahead, Charlene, and just remember to unmute yourself. Uh, hello, good evening, Mayor and Council. Can you hear me? We can, yes, go ahead. Thanks, Charlene. Hi, hi, thank you. I wasn't planning on speaking, but now I'm going to try. Um, I am Charlene Patterson, owner, operator of Shars Landing. I have a fully licensed liquor primary license and a hall, which have been closed for, <laughs> due to COVID since March 17, 2020. So um, I 100% wholly support um, Quality Foods, which is an upscale, upscale grocery store that we in Southport, many of us can walk to or stop on our way home to pick up our groceries for dinner. And it would be a privilege to be able to buy a bottle of wine to enjoy with our steak, to enjoy at our home with our families. Now is the time we need this. I welcome big trucks delivering huge amounts of food and beverages to our stores in Southport. I welcome, I invite them, and my business is on Argyle Street, my home is on Argyle Street. I welcome the traffic, I welcome the affluence, I encourage and beg city and the community and the bylaws to support our beloved grocery store, Quality Foods, to be able to add this convenience to me as a homeowner and survive. We need this. We've lost our two cold beer and wine stores that were down the hill. I personally did frequent them, but they were in a... Uh, they were in a difficult area for walking. Um, the area is improving. Quality Foods is not in a difficult area. It's a community area. It's a welcome. I walk there all the time. I see the, the I see the arts of the community. Um, I feel very safe there. And I would like to have the privilege to buy a couple beers, a six pack, a bottle of wine on my way home. So please, and I'm sorry, Mr. Muggleston from the Barclay, you, you are considering Quality Foods as a competitor. I'm considering them as an improvement to my community and I welcome them. Thank you. Thank you, Shar. Twyla, are there other members of the public who have asked to speak? No other hands have been raised. Okay, then at this point, we will move forward with questions from council. This is an opportunity for members of council to ask questions through the chair of the manager of planning or the applicant or members of the public who have spoken. We will start with Councillor Kuhn. Thank you. Uh, I guess this question is probably for the applicant. Uh, I just wonder, where is this LRS being relocated from? If the applicant is available to answer that question. Yes, uh, hi there. Uh, this is, uh, this license is coming from a, uh, a pub and very small cold beer and wine store uh, on the gorge in Victoria, BC. The property is being redeveloped um, for housing and that's where the license would be relocated from. Okay. Thank you very much for the information. Other questions from Council? Councillor Solda. Yeah. Uh, Madam Mayor, well, um, I remember we 
going through a process like this before and we talked about trucks and how the access of the truck was going to get in and no we were assured that it was a small truck that was going and it wouldn't stop traffic but yes to this day it still stops traffic and it is not a small truck that goes into a, another um, wine and beer store so I have with quality foods they're great corporate citizens and I love them dearly and um, because they've done a lot for the community. My only, my biggest concern right now, even in the parking lot there, you go in, you go shopping, it can be really congested. And um, there's also the light that is on the corner there um, on the crosswalk. And that was put in because there was so much issues near misses. And I'm concerned about the parking, people running across the street too. I'm sure there is that light, it blinks off and on and people stop when they see the blink. So uh, I'm, I'm just wondering how, how is that going to be handled? Because wine and beer stores can be very busy and we know that and, um, and it's already busy up there. So I'm just, I have some concerns and I do agree about the trucks. That's the big one for me, visibility and, um, the trucks going in and out. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Solda. So we have had some preliminary information uh, from the development planner um, to address your questions. Is there a, a follow-up question that you're specifically hoping to ask? Um, basically, I've heard this before from other developers saying this is this is not going to happen and it's happened. And so I'm um, I'm a skeptic at heart. Let's put it that way. Thank you. So if I'm making out a question there, um, as a reminder, it is um, predominantly the function of, of council to ask questions um, rather than debate the application at a public hearing. I think what you're asking is potentially, do we have any, um, do we have any recourse or do we have any ability to ensure that what we're told about how trucks and, and equipment will be delivered to the store, do we have any ability to ensure that that is actually what happens? Well, that, okay. Hold up. Sure, let's do that. And also the light. The light right now is just a press button. You know, I'm still concerned about people crossing that crosswalk. Is it going to be sufficient what we have there? And if it's not, I end up paying too. Thank you. So um, either the development planner or our director of development services um, potentially could answer that question. So I can take a first crack at it and uh, Brian can add to, I think that the, 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 the most effective way to would be for is the city would need to potentially regulate trucks from not being able to, like I'm talking a, a large truck, not, not, not a normal vehicle uh, from uh, parking on 10th Avenue and loading. So we would have to, uh, if that became an issue, then we would uh, put rules and regulations that there would be no you know, semi truck be allowed to stop on and park and load on 10th Avenue. That'd be one. That'd be one way. I mean, the there it was as it was already stated, they are not allowed to use the same loading zone as the grocery store. That so that's a provincial uh, regulation. So they would need to make it work within their parking area. And if they did not and tried to begin loading on 10th Avenue, we would need to enforce. Uh, regulations that that isn't permitted on our public road right of way. Thank you. And as far as the there, there's that the pedestrian activated crosswalk there. Um, I believe it's fairly effective, but you know that wouldn't if if it became it, it it's a pedestrian activated is a very good flashing uh, crosswalk. Uh, it's important that pedestrians do use that. Uh, you know, as, as, as way as opposed to just crossing the street, but um, that would be something that we would have to evaluate it if it became a concern, but I'm not hugely aware of it being a problem right now. Okay, thank you very much for the information. Council, are there other questions? Okay, seeing no other questions of council. Once this public hearing has terminated, members of council may not as a group or as individuals receive any further oral or written presentations on this matter, 
on this matter, including what might be perceived of as informal discussions immediately after the termination of this meeting. I ask that all parties comply with this. Before closing this portion of the public hearing, I'm going to call three times for further speakers on any of the matters contained in the proposed bylaw. For the first time, is there anyone who wishes to make any further representation? Yes, Mayor Minions, we have Rick Fields who would like to address council. Thank you, Rick. Whenever you're ready, if you could just start by introducing yourself, your name and address, please. And then Mr. Fields, if you just unmute yourself. Perfect. Hi there. Uh, my name is actually Jeremy Pott. I am the uh, regional operations manager. Um, <laughs> Uh, for Cascadia Liquor. So I just wanted to um, address councils and the concerns with trucks. Obviously we know this will um, affect the parking lot and we know that we don't want any trucks uh, unloaded on 10th. Um, and working with VanCam, who is our main transportation uh, company, uh, we, we do have options. They do tend to try to do all of their loads on a large truck. Um, we had similar issues with uh, our location parcel, which we just opened up. And when we thought that a large 52 foot truck wouldn't get into that parking lot, we were working with them to have smaller vehicles. So it, it is a possibility. Um, uh, I just wanted to note that, that that is a possibility to get a smaller truck into there and work with VanCam on that. So thank you. Thank you very much. Bye -bye. I'm sorry, sorry, Mr. Fields. I just need to clarify. You're showing in our attendee list as Rick Fields. We have two, so my apologies for the uh, incorrect introduction. We now have Charlene Patterson who would like to address council. Okay. Whenever you're ready, Char. Hi, Charlene Patterson, Char's Landing, 4815 Argyle. Uh, just regarding parking, um, I personally have uh, liquor delivered to my property and it is the responsibility of the truck driver as to where he parks his truck safely and how he takes his trolleys of, of delivery to my place. It's his responsibility. If I see him as the owner, if I see him doing it in an irresponsible or dangerous fashion, I report it to his boss. What I heard um, Mr. Smith say is that he that the province is not regulating how food, I mean, pardon me, how uh, beverages are being delivered to the grocery store. Is that correct? That that the province is mandating how food should be delivered to the grocery store, but not how beverages should be delivered to the grocery store. That's what I heard Mr. Smith say. And if that's the case, uh, um, thank you, Mr. Smith. Is that what you said? Just to clarify, is my understanding is that liquor cannot use the same loading zone as a grocery store. So okay, Quality I'm, Foods has their own commercial loading zone that their large trucks use, and the liquor delivery cannot use that same loading zone that they use for the liquor store, for the grocery store. That's I'm, why there's an alternative that they're proposing to use the deliveries from within the parking lot to go directly into the liquor store not the grocery store. Yeah, I'm surprised at that because the province is not guiding municipalities well because the, pro the municipalities are now having to, to implement these new policies to be able to, to allow grocery stores to sell uh, liquor or beverages, but they're not mandating how those beverages should be delivered. So I, I think the province has some catching up to do, but in short, um, does the... Um, does the municipality um, dictate how um, the uh, the beverage truck should deliver to my liquor primary place or to a, a food prime uh, a fruit primary liquor um, to a restaurant? Is is the city concerned with how uh, um, the beer truck delivers to Little Bavaria? Is the city concerned with that? Because if they are not, the province is not con concerned with how the trucks arrive to the grocery store. So why should the city make such an important decision based on something that even the province doesn't think is necessary to mandate? 
So I have concerns. If that's what your the most of your influence is, is how that truck will safely deliver those beverages. I don't believe that that's the municipality's concern. Safety is a concern to everyone, but the city is promoting the community, the 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 people, the residences, the businesses. The, that's the city's responsibility to make sure they they encourage and administer our businesses to succeed and our people to live safely and conveniently. The province's responsibility is how that truck is going to deliver that, that beverage in a safe way. And if, if the city has a problem with that, the city should, I, and I will help you talk to the province to get that mandated so the grocery stores can get those beverages so that I can walk to that store and get my bottle of wine. So I'm done, but I, I, I really feel passionately, obviously, about this. And thank you for you listening. For, listening. Thank you very much. Have we had any other members of the public wishing to speak at this point? Uh, Mr. Laporte has his hand up again and then it was lowered. So I just want to give Mr. Laporte an opportunity to raise his hand again if he was wishing to speak. Yes. So Mr. Laporte. Go Hello. ahead. Yeah, I was just wanted to, in response to uh, Councillor Solda's concerns as well, the crosswalk in that area, although it is um, it is a flashing light uh, that is pedestrian controlled. As a as a, a resident of the area, I've tried to cross that crosswalk many times using that flashing light, and there's been many times in the evenings when the when the visibility is low that people don't always see that flashing light, especially through the winter time when it's you know, incredibly foggy out. And um, there have been many near misses at that crosswalk. And uh, it, I think that if there's increased traffic up this end of 10th Avenue, that that is going to become an issue. And this is also speaking as, as a parent who's lost a child in this town to a large truck. Um, I think that is something that really should be looked at as well, the increased amount of traffic that will come under that area and the large trucks that could possibly potentially be in that area. Um, as far as um, the parking along that side of the 10th Avenue there, there's also the consideration that there's a bus stop there right there beside quality foods and that that area needs to be kept clear for the buses uh, so that they can effectively continue to transport people around the city. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Laporte. Okay, I, I see no other hands at this time, Mayor Minions. Okay. Mr. Muggleston has raised his hand. Okay, go ahead, um, Peter, whenever you're ready. Hello, um, I just wanna clarify something on the, the sh shipping entrances and uh, going into either a grocery store or another business of some sort. Um, for one, there's separate entrances for both um, a customer walking into a grocery store or another business going or going into a, a, a licensee liquor store. Uh, they have to be separate. The shipments can't go into one door, go through another business, which is would be the grocery store, and then go into the licensee liquor store. That's what the clarification is. Um, and also another comment, um, the volume of going into a, a, a liquor primary and the volume of product going into a licensee retail store doesn't compare. The, the volume going into a licensee liquor store is, is huge. And when making those comparisons, comparisons you're, talking, uh, you're talking two different games here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Peter. We'll call now for a second time. Is there anyone who wishes to make further representations? I see no hands being raised. Okay. And for a third and final time, is there anyone who wishes to make further representations? And again, no hands are being raised. As noted in my opening statement, council may now without further notice give whatever effect council believes proper to the representations made at this hearing. In most cases, the report of this hearing will be presented to the next regular meeting of council where council will decide whether or not to proceed with approving uh, 
approving the application by way of passing further readings of the bylaw. There being no further speakers, I declare this portion of the public hearing closed. And if somebody would like to please move adjournment or termination of the public hearing, moved by Councillor Paulson, seconded by Councillor Solda. All in favor? Carried. Thank you very much, uh, everyone, for attending.